hey guys so welcome back to my channel so before we get into today's video i am partnering up with anna luisa again if you guys watched my last video then you know that they sent me some jewelry pieces for me to be able to share with you guys so i'm super excited to be able to work with them again uh, this time around i was able to get a pair of earrings um, a bracelet and a couple necklaces so before i share the jewelry pieces with you guys i am going to talk a little bit about anna luisa and then after that we can get right into the tutorial so a little bit about Ana Luisa. Ana Luisa is, as I mentioned before, a jewelry company. They are based out of New York and they offer affordable, um, high-end jewelry. So for all my girls on a budget that want quality jewelry, Ana Luisa is the place to go. All of their jewelry is sustainably sourced. So they are environmental conscious. Um, their jewelry is made out of recycled metals and recycled gold. And I love that about their brand. Even the packaging that they send their jewelry in comes in a recycled paper box. So I think that's awesome. A wide variety of pieces. You can find earrings on there. You can find necklaces. You can find bracelets. Pieces that you can layer. They're very versatile. Um, so the first piece that I'm sharing with you is called Aura. It's a bracelet and honestly, I don't have anything like this in my collection. I'm not really a big bracelet person. I don't usually wear bracelets, but I saw this and I really fell in love with it because it reminds me of what a watch would look like. So I thought it would be really nice to add to my collection. This bracelet also comes with extra links if you need it, if it's too small. So the next piece is called Paris and it is a twisted gold hoop earring. I really like this because it's something that you can wear every day. It's not too dressy and it's not too casual. So I really like this and I'm happy that I now have this in my collection. So the next piece is called Hannah K and honestly this is my favorite one. I just love that you can wear this as an everyday necklace it's very dainty I love that it features this rectangular pendant with an engraved star detail on the front of it it's great for layering so it's very versatile yeah I just really like this one this is one that I'm definitely going to be wearing on an everyday basis So the last piece is called Amos and it features a cubic zirconia pendant. Um, I really love the simplicity of this necklace. I like that you can dress this up, but it's still simple enough for you to wear it on an everyday basis. So this is definitely a must have for your collection. So currently Ana Luisa is running their biggest sale of the year. It's buy one, get one 60% off. Um, even if you're not going to buy something for yourself, I'm sure you guys can find something on there for a family member or a friend. It's a great gift idea with Christmas coming up around the corner. So I definitely am going to link everything for you in the description box if you're interested in buying any of the pieces that you've seen on me today. Um, and yeah, just take advantage of the sale. So let's hop right into today's video. So with the holidays right around the corner, I thought that I would film a holiday tutorial for you guys. So I made this duster jacket with a notch or what they would call a lapel collar. Um, I'm not really happy with the end result of the jacket. I felt like I should have used a material that had more structure. I also ran out of material. So I'm definitely going to let you guys know some of the mistakes that I made throughout this tutorial so that you guys can create a better jacket than I was able to create. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I made this jacket then just keep on watching. So the first thing that you want to do is trace off your jacket block. If you have a bodice block you can use that as well but just know that the fit of it might be a little bit different. You also want to go ahead and make sure you mark all your notches. That's going to be important when you want to sew all your pieces together. So also I should mention if you are making a duster jacket, obviously you want to extend the length. For me, I didn't have enough fabric so I wasn't able to extend it as long as I wanted to. So the next thing that I'm doing is I'm adding an extension. This is where your buttons would sit on your jacket. If you want it to be a double breasted jacket, you would go out three inches. For this, I'm only going out one inch. Okay. 
So now I'm marking my break point and this is where I want my lapel to kind of flip over. So this is what's also going to create my roll line. So this is usually where you would sit your first button. I put mine at the waist. So I am now going to draw in my roll line. I also forgot to mention that you need the back neck measurement from your jacket block. So mine was three and a half. So that line that I just drew there is actually a measurement of three and a half inches. So from the top of the line up until the shoulder seam, that's three and a half inches. And I'm just double checking that line to make sure that I have the correct measurement. Because if it's not the correct measurement, it's not the collar will not fit in the back of the neck. So I just made a point uh, three quarters of an inch away and I am now drawing in a curved line and this will help your collar roll over better if you have a curved line. And then I'm just using my ruler to square off the back line for the collar. And this is gonna be three and a half inches. I felt like this was too big so if you're not really looking for something more dramatic, I would say make it a little bit smaller. Next, I marked a point two inches down from the neckline. So this is basically going to help me shape the lapel. I'm marking a point five inches away from that marking. And then I'm going to just draw in a curved line. This is going to help me sew in the collar. I don't like to sew it in on a pointed or, I guess, straight line. I rather use a curved line. It's easier to sew. This is something I learned in school, so I just continue to use it because I feel like it's easier. And then I am basically connecting a line from the break point to that point that I made um, five inches out. And then I'm connecting that line back into the curved line that I just drew. And then again, I feel like it kind of came out a little bit bigger than I wanted. So I probably wouldn't even make it as big as that. I would probably do like three inches next time instead of making it five inches. Now I'm just trying to figure out how I want to draw in my collar piece. I went pretty much midway through that first line that I drew there, that's five inches, and then I went up two inches from that line. And then I am just going to freehand that curved line to the end of the collar. So I'm just checking to make sure that all of my lines are accurate and okay. This one I'm refixing because I realized that it's not squared off properly. Um, and then now I'm showing you guys how I create the facing. So I went out two inches from the neckline. And then I am just going to extend all the way down to the bottom. And that is how you create your facing. And then make sure you guys mark all your notches as I was telling you before. So now I'm making my collar. My under collar is going to be 1 8 of an inch smaller than my top collar. And this will help so that it rolls under. Um, I'm also going to do that at the other side as well. So that when I'm going to trace it on my tracing paper, that I can trace out the smaller piece for the under collar and then the top piece is going to be for the top collar. So when I'm tracing it out, I think you guys will have a better um, understanding of what I'm talking about. So now I'm just tracing it out in a different color. So what I'm tracing out now is my top collar. And then my top collar is going to be the bigger piece because I want my bottom collar to roll underneath it. So you're gonna make you make it 
So you basically make it slightly smaller than the top collar. And then my top collar I am going to cut on the fold and I only cut one piece and then I also cut one piece of fusing. So fusing, I don't know if anybody, I don't think I've ever shown you guys how to use fusing. It's basically um, what you use to stiffen your material. So then what I'm tracing off in green now is the bottom collar. And you can see that I made it slightly smaller than the top collar. And this one you are going to cut on the bias. So you're not cutting it on the straight line, straight grain. You're not cutting it on the fold, but you're going to cut it on the bias of your fabric. And you're going to cut two pieces instead of one piece for your under collar. So now I'm just using my orange marker to trace out my facing. Your facing pieces, you should have two of the two facing pieces. And you should also cut out two fused pieces for your facing. And as I mentioned before, you do need fusing pieces for your collars as well. So now I'm just tracing off all my pieces. I'm going to be tracing off my collar pieces, my facing pieces, and then I'm also going to cut out my front piece as well.
So for the front piece, I was too lazy to go ahead and trace it out again. So I'm just going to add seam allowance around the neckline. I'm doing 3 eighths of an inch. And then I'm going to add seam allowance around the side seams and the shoulder seams. And then I'm just going to cut it out from this pattern. So instead of tracing it off, I'm just cutting it out from the pattern because I've already gotten all my pieces anyways. So it's not a big deal if I just use it from here. But you guys are also like welcome to trace off your new pattern if you'd like. I just was trying to save on paper. So now I'm just tracing off my back block. With this one you don't have to do anything really to it but just mark off your notches and you're going to make sure that it matches your front piece and you trace out all your darts. So for this one this is going to be cut on the fold and you are going to cut one piece and if you had a lining you would repeat the same step you cut one piece so now I'm just making my back facing and I just measured out two inches from that neckline and then two inches down and then you basically just curve around the neckline until you get to that end point and that is your facing for your back So after all the seam allowance is marked, so it's basically a half inch around, you're going to take tracing paper and you're going to trace out your facing piece for the back. So as you can see I'm doing there. And then I'm going to add a half an inch seam allowance at the bottom of it. And then I'm just drawing around the neckline. And then this is also going to be cut on fold. And you are going to cut out a fusing piece for this as well. So now you want to trace out your sleeve. And I'm just using my jacket sleeve block. So now that you've cut out all your pieces, you want to go ahead and serge your pieces. If you are lining your jacket, you don't have to serge your pieces, but because I ran out of material, I wasn't able to line my jacket, so I do have to go in and serge all of my pieces. So 
So now I'm just sewing my darts and I've shown you guys this many times before. You just want to make sure that you transfer all of your markings from your pattern onto your fabric so you know where your darts start and end and you know where the dart placements are. So now that all your darts are sewn, you want to sew your front pieces to your back. I'm starting off with sewing it at the shoulder seam. And then you're going to go ahead and sew it together at the side seams. And then you are going to repeat that same step for the other side. And if you have your lining pieces, you would do the exact same thing. You sew at the side seams and then also the shoulder seams. And I'm really sorry for the lighting, guys. It was in the nighttime and I didn't have any proper lighting so that's why it's so dark Hopefully you guys can see so now these are the facing pieces so again you sew the facing pieces at the shoulder seams and then if you had lining you would actually attach these facing pieces to your lining if you So the next thing I'm doing is I'm just showing you how to pin your collar into place. So your under collar is going to go on the jacket itself. So you're going to just pin it on. You're going to use your notches. So you should have a middle point for your notch. Then you should have a so shoulder seam for your notch. And then there should be a few notches along the collar part of the neck. And you are just going to match all that up. So this is why I told you guys notches are very important. If you didn't have that, you would have nothing to reference where some of your pieces go. And it can get very confusing. An important thing that I should mention also is that you're not going to sew on the seam allowance of the collar. So make sure we put 3 eighths of an inch. You're not sewing all the way to the end. You need to leave that little seam allowance so that you can sew the other collar on top of it. So when I start sewing, you'll probably understand more what I'm talking about. So now you're just repeating the same steps with your facing, but you're going to be using your top collar to attach to your facing pieces. I'm just using my notches to match up all my pieces again. Now that that's all pinned into place, I'm going to sew. Remember, you don't want to sew over your seam allowances, so if you left 3 eighths of an inch, that point you don't want to sew over top of that. So you're going to start after that point. 
and I'm just stitching it now onto the bottom collar to the jacket. And this should be stitched on at 3 eighths of an inseam allowance. So you're also going to repeat the same step for the facing and the top collar. So you're just going to stitch it at the neckline like how I showed you how I pinned it. I'm not going to go through the sewing process. That's how it should look. And then once you have both of them complete, you're going to start pinning it at the collar, the top collar. So as you guys can see, I'm doing in this clip. And then where the notch is, you want to start pinning that around but when you go to sew that you're not going to sew over top of it so remember how i told you about that seam allowance that you needed to leave so that's where that seam allowance is going to come in handy for you to stitch the collar together so there's that extra space for you to stitch that down and i'm just pinning it now And then again, you're going to pin around the facing to the front of the jacket or the lapel of the jacket. So I'm sewing this down at 3 eighths of an inch. So once that's finished, you're going to start sewing on your lapel and this should be done in three steps. So you sew the, the top first, then you sew from the top till the seam point at the, lapel, or at the, at the notch and you're sewing all of this at a th 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm not catching any of my seams in this. I'm going to pull my seams away until I get to the stitch line. And the reason why you do this is so that your notch doesn't come out bulky. So I know that it's kind of hard to see and I'm really sorry for the lighting guys. But it was in the nighttime and I had no other option. So now I'm sewing another step. So I'm again pulling away my seams. I'm just making sure it's just above the seam line and then I'm going to stitch down until I get to that corner point and then I'm going to pivot my, my fabric and then you're going to just stitch all the way down. I think that's a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance again. If not, it might be a half inch. I'm not sure, but definitely double check the beginning of the video. 
and then you're just gonna keep stitching down and again I ran out of material so this is not going down as far as it should it's literally stopping halfway within the jacket so it's unfortunate but it happens So now that that's all sewn, I'm going to just check it to make sure that I got all the points how I want it and then I'm going to clip the corners. Again this reduces the bulk, so always clip your corners. And then I'm going to just turn it to the right side. And there you have it so as you can see I didn't even get it perfect because it's kind of like bulking up there but honestly sometimes this thing is hard and once you iron it down that will help as well so now I'm just under stitching so after it's on the other side I'm just going to go ahead and under stitch you want to under stitch the top part of the collar you also want to under stitch your your facing and your front piece together so where that lapel goes you want to under stitch that as well so that your fabric will stay to the wrong side that your under fabric will stay to the wrong side so now that that's done I am going to take everything to the iron board and I'm gonna iron it down oh another important step that I'm forgetting is that you're going to stitch the facing piece to the to the actual jacket so that part is not continuously lifting up on you so if you stitch that together, it will basically stay in place. Another thing is after this point, if you have a lining, this is where you would sew your lining in. And if you guys want, like I can try to do another video where I can show you how it's done and you include the lining as well. So let me know in the comments if that's something you would be interested in. And there you have it, a notch collar duster jacket. As I mentioned before, I wasn't too pleased with how it turned out, but I'm happy that I was able to share with you guys how I did it um, and some of the mistakes that I made along the way. Thanks again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video, and you guys don't forget to check them out. They have a sale going on, buy one and you get the other one 60% off. I've left all the links in the description box, so please do shop for the Christmas holidays. Anyways, I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure you guys comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.